round. Again, rules are the same. Let's move on uh, into our uh, second round. The New York Jets suffering a really tough loss as eight and a half point favorites at home with 10 days rest to prepare for the Denver Broncos. And in a game where Bo Nix threw for 60 yards at one point, had minus seven the first half, uh, the uh, New York Jets struggled to get anything going offensively. Three, uh, only three field goals in this game, no touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers struggled throughout, but there's a lot of blame to go around. Aaron Rodgers with his inefficiency, Robert Sala with, uh, in terms of a lot of the penalties, the Jets suffering 13 in this game. So I'll start with you, Tim, in this spot. Does more blame go on Aaron Rodgers for the loss of the Broncos, or is it more on Robert Sala? Well, I think it's a little bit of both because a majority of those calls came on false thoughts. And we all know Aaron Rodgers has his, you know, his famous cadence that draws a lot of defenses offsides throughout his time in Green Bay. So it's, it's only understandable that he does the same thing here in New York. But here's where I also blame Rodgers. You had three days in June to be at mandatory minicamp, and your dumbass is going to go see King Tut and Ramsey's out in friggin' Egypt. You know, like, dude, it's three days, okay? You, and, and you missed all of last season, except for, what, three plays, four plays? I mean, like, Robert Sala has his own issues because as we all saw on Hard Knocks last season, Robert Sala could not stop gushing over the fact that, oh my God, Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. He looked like Sean McVay talking to Bill Belichick at the beginning of the Super Bowl 53. Like that's what Robert Sala to Aaron Rodgers looked like. Not to mention when playing my said Patriots, <laughs> Sala tried to hug Rodgers only for Rodgers to go, dude, back off. <laughs> and then they, they're like, oh, you know, he, he tries to do this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, no. We all know what just happened. We all saw it with our own two nights. He tried to hug you. You said no. Don't give – don't – whatever they're talking about, total nonsense. But both of them are to blame. Rodgers, because, you know, you, you could have been there when you're installing the cadence, when you're trying to work with your offensive lineman. But Salah, because – he is just so starstruck that this guy is his quarterback. It's like, dude, grow a pair. You're the head coach of the friggin' team. So I think both of them deserve uh, fair blame. Yeah, it's fair. And hey, like you said that moment, uh, you know, last week, and I did feel like in some regards, folks dismi completely dismiss it. And, uh, you know, in certain regards, you know, folks act like it was the end of the world. It, what I found weird about it was not just that Aaron, you know, kind of, you know, was was going for the, you know, he was going for the shove. Saul was going for the hug. It's very weird. It was kind of the weird look that Aaron gave Saul after. It was like that was that was. I mean, there's a little disconnect there. I 100% agree with you though in regards to, uh, you know, him him skipping mandatory minicamp. You know, it would have been nice, like you said, he's got a very distinct cadence. Would have been nice to maybe work with the old lineman, work with the receivers to be able to to get that, you know, down. Especially like you said, because he missed last season. Uh, great points all the way around, Tim. To you, EJ, does this loss for the Jets, ten to nine to the Denver Broncos, is it more on the quarterback Rodgers or the coach Sala? I think this is more on the coach. I think that you have to understand when the opposing quarterback doesn't even have a 50% completion rate, all of his yards thrown, 60 yards, were to one player in Cortland Sutton. Uh, I know your defense played good, you know, and, and you're a defensive head coach, but you have to understand where your team is at. They tried to make moves on that offensive line and, and signing or trading for Morgan Moses. They got Tyron Smith signed there, but those guys haven't been very good. Moses looks like he's injured now again. Um, Brees Hall, 0.4 yards averaged, 10 carries, 0.4 average. Crazy. You have to get your running game going, especially in that type of a game, to help Aaron Rodgers out. Um, and, and, you know, you knew that Patrick Sertan Jr. was going to shadow Garrett Wilson that entire game. He's done that uh, to opposing teams' number ones all season. You have to game plan and be ready for that. Get your other guys involved. You have to use the pre-snap motion. And I, I think that it, it's kind of crazy that Solid doesn't understand this stuff. Um, and, and a lot of blame goes on the offensive coordinator, but that's beside the point. It's between Rodgers and Sala. So um, I'll keep it at Sala. He has to understand where your offense is at, what gives your defenses fits is the motions and um, the shifts and the RPOs and all of that stuff, the play actions. Not utilizing that stuff to get your offense in better positions to score uh, points in, in, in regards to touchdowns and not just field goals, I think was an ultimate failure by the um, the offensive coordinator. And then it also goes up to the head coach. So Sala, in my opinion, deserves the large majority of the blame. 
No question. And, you know, to your point regarding Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator, I mean, Wilson, we know he's he's there because he's he's buddies with Aaron. We, we heard the reports he enjoyed throwing darts with Aaron in, in Green Bay. You know, he didn't call plays. Uh, like you said, the, the lack of motion that we see from the Jets, it's very, it, it's it's somewhat ar- archaic a way to, to, to run offense. I mean, you know, the Dallas Cowboys and, and, and Mike McCarthy don't run that. That's honestly what Aaron and McCarthy had some issues in terms of offensive philosophy. I don't know if it was in regards to shifts because Aaron, doesn't tend to be a fan of those, but yeah, like you said, a lot of this is just a disconnect between the coach and the quarterback. And yeah, like you said, that's a lot of blame does go on Salah in that regard. To you, Paris, more blame on Rodgers or more blame on Salah for the Jets' loss to Denver? I'm definitely blaming Salah for this loss. I mean, you got it. One, you got to get Brees Hall more involved. I get 10 carries, not many yards, but he's a number one back. You got to get him involved. I really like Braylon Allen. I like how they try and get him involved. He's a good backup running back, but if he's able to do some stuff, you got to expect Bre- Brees Hall to be able to do some things too. So you got to get him involved. And then with your wide receivers, I mean, yes, they got Garrett Wilson. Pat Sertan's going to guard Garrett Wilson, but you got to draw some plays up to get him open. And then you got Mike Williams and Alan Zard. I mean, yes, but not Garrett Wilson. But Mike Williams is your deep ball guy. You got to send him deep. He's going to get some shots. And then Alan Lazard has that connection with Aaron Rodgers. So you can kind of drop the things you want to drop for Garrett Wilson. If Satan's on him, Lazard's going to get open. Aaron Rodgers knows exactly what Lazard's going to do. So you've got to drop some plays for these players. They have enough players on that offense that their offense should be working. I get the line isn't the best, but with Brees Hall in the backfield, you got Garrett Wilson's going to take their best defender. You already have a connection with Alan Lazard. Mike Williams, you saw him with the Chargers. The deep balls, that's his thing. So with all the three of those guys, there's no way your, deep, your offense should only be at nine points. That's a head coach problem. You've got to get your players involved. Give them plays they like. Start moving them around. You just, there's no way it should be shut down like this. No, you shouldn't. And, and you know, to, again, to go into your points about, again, lack of motion, there being a disconnect there. Uh, yeah, it's, again, a, a very, very archaic style of offense. And like you said, I mean, the, listen, I've – I've been a guy who's been very skeptical about the Jets, you know, uh, uh, overall weapons. Brees Hall's good. Garrett Wilson, I think, is really good and can be great, if, you know, if he gets the opportunities. But, uh, again, Lazard, the connection with Rodgers, like, I, I mean, I actually saw a stat. I think Lazard actually might have more receiving yards than Garrett Wilson does, right? Just because, again, he has the rapport with Aaron Rodgers. So, it's it's – it's there's a lot of imbalance with the Jets, and again, I'm not sure they really know who they are on the offensive side of the ball. And again, we're only four weeks in, but you like to have a little bit more of a sense of of what you want to be uh, at this point in the season. Finally, do you Mike Guido more blame on Aaron Rodgers for the loss of it to the uh, Denver Broncos or on Robert Sala? Well, I think the most reasonable answer is probably a little bit of both, kind of like what Tim said. Um, I tend to lean a little bit more towards coaching. Uh, now, listen, I, I understand that. Um, Aaron Rodgers missed mandatory minicamp. I understand all of that. Uh, and you can see it right. Missed timing on throws and stuff like you can see all of the, you know, the disconnect that he's had through the first four weeks. Um, but I do think that this kind of falls on coaching because a lot of this is just dumb mental mistakes, right? A lot of this is just not being disciplined with the whistle, right? A lot of this is just, you know, missing your route, not knowing the playbook. It's a lot of, you know, like, I think I like what Paris said a lot of just like, you know, you have to try to create ways to get your running game more involved, right? Whether, listen, if Brees Hall doesn't have it that day, right? Everybody's been saying it 10 carries for four yards for the entire game. Uh, Braylon Allen was averaging four and a half yards carry. If he's having more success, then try to get him a little bit more involved in the offense. So I think that there's a part of that. They clearly didn't adjust. Robert Sala, I think, I mean, when you look at what his responsibilities are within the Jets organization, I mean, everybody's got to remember, Robert Sala came in as a defensive head coach. He is a guy that comes from the defensive side of the ball. The Jets defense is outstanding, and it's been outstanding all season, and it'll continue to be outstanding. So it's about the offensive adjustments. I tend to throw that more on Nathaniel Hackett more than on more than on Robert Sala, but again, Robert Sala's the the head honcho. He's the guy that's in charge. He needs to be able to make these decisions, find ways to create openings in their offense, and actually use Aaron Rodgers against a team that, I mean, quite frankly, Denver has no business being anywhere near the playoffs this year. This is not like a, a, a like a, an explosive year for them. You're at home. I, I I think it falls a little bit more on coaching more than it does the player. 
That's fair. I mean, listen, we've seen coaches, and, and again, uh, the example I'm going to use, we know Brock Purdy has been at least more productive than Rodgers in the last couple of seasons, but listen, I saw a game where they played the, the Los Angeles Rams, and again, they get a, a team where there's familiarity, and uh, Jawan Jennings, who, you know, Tennessee guy I love, but that's your number one target. You're missing Chris McCaffrey, and Ayuk's not there because of uh, tra- or playing, but not there because of training camp. Debo's out. Kittle. And, I mean, you just saw a fluidity in their offense. You saw motion. You saw uh, th- them be able to get guys who we've never even heard of, you know, going. Even on the Rams side, they were able to do that last week. And so you see sort of the, uh, the, the, the the juxtaposition now with the Jets. And, again, bad weather. We understand that. I will say it was funny that it felt like Rodgers and Sala, every single chance they got, they pointed out the bad weather. It's like, guys, you play in New York. Like, that's – Sometimes the weather's not going to be totally ideal. I know it's still September, but still. Um, so really good points across the board. Uh, Tim, once again, I'm going to give you the, the the best take for the day. Moving on to the, or not moving on, we're still in the second round, but still in first place. Mike Guido again, you in second place, and EJ Savage. I thought you had a good take as well. Uh, so you get on the board uh, right here.